Good evening. This is a share um, just to reiterate and explain maybe in one little foul swoop here. Um, give me one second. Um, back benefits. There seems to be some confusion on when back benefits are available. And um, some people think they're available when they're not. And so a few criteria here is probably necessary. Now, remember, we have two programs, SSD and SSI. So let's talk about SSI first, and then we'll talk about SSD. So SSI does not allow for retroactive benefits prior to the date you applied. So if you apply in September 2023, um, but you've been disabled for two years and you just got around to getting that paperwork done, um, it's not going to go back two years. It's not going to go back two months. It's not going to go back to January 1st of 2023. It is as of the month you applied. Now, I'll talk to you about protective filing. Remind me before I get up after um, we go through social security disability and, and how that works, but still on SSI. So you, so here's what would happen. You will file, let's say it's September, 2023. You finally get that application in and get it all squared away with the SSA. And you say, win your case, September of 2024, after one year, you will get back benefits if the date that the SSA determined you became disabled was indeed when you said it was, or at least by the date that you applied. Because remember, they're not gonna go look at disability before then, they're gonna do the technical date of when you applied and not look at previous uh, allegations of disability, even though they're gonna look at all those records, they can't find you disabled before the date you applied. So if they find, so, so uh, for instance, um, they could find you disabled the month that you applied, not before, or a subsequent month. So even though you, you applied in September, let's say you said you were disabled January, 2023, you applied in September, um, they agree that, well, they're not going to make an official finding that you were disabled in, in January, even if they think it. They can't give an answer before September of 2023. So in that case, if they found it before 2023, September of 2023, they would award you as of September 2023. And that would be your onset date um, officially on that application um, as the earliest possible date. And if you win, say, in September of 2024, you're going to get that entire year since you applied paid in SSI to whatever extent you're eligible based on your financials that they're going to be asking you about. And I have a video on that. If you're wondering, wow, I just won my SSI and now they want to have an interview with me. What is it about? This is what it's going to be about. So the details are in that video. I'll try to link it. Um, but let's say you apply September, 2023, you prevail in September, 2024, but they say, we found you became disabled, you know, June of 2023, that the evidence proved it as of June, not as of January of 2023, like you alleged, there just wasn't enough evidence between January and June. So we're giving it to you in June. You're only going to get the I'm sorry, June of September, 2023. They find that you were disabled in June of 2023. You, you applied in September, 2023. You alleged January, 2023. They didn't agree with January because there wasn't sufficient evidence till June of 2023. Um, they still can't award you before the September, 2023 because you had not applied. Even though you, you know, they find through all that evidence that uh, you are disabled, they can't make a technical finding until September 23. Okay, now September 2023, another example. You file, you allege January 2023 onset. Uh, they find you um, 
They make a decision in September of 2024. They say it was June of 2024. So they didn't go back to January 2023 in that case either, but they did find you disabled. They found it. You had enough evidence to prove it as of June. Maybe something big happened. Maybe you had an MRI um, that finally, you know, objectively diagnosed something. Um, then you would be eligible for the benefits only from June. The back benefits would be, you know, whatever your first month is after June to September and then prospectively. So you'd get like a couple months worth of benefits as your back benefit check. And then each month going forward, of course, you'd get your perspectives. And again, remember perspectives depend on your financial, financially remaining eligible. So that's a whole nother slew of obligations under SSI. Um, so you can have being disabled as of the date you applied because it really was proven by then, but you're not allowed to get it earlier because it didn't apply. That's why SSI, you got to hop to it if you have the goods. Um, if you don't have the goods, it doesn't matter because like I said, like that last example, the person doesn't get it until June of 2024, even though they applied in September of 2023 and alleged a January of 2023 date. So I'm getting these numbers all confused in my head. I'm so tired. <laughs> it's evening. Um, okay, so let's move on to SSD. It's a little different. Um, in some really good ways. Well, there's one negative, and I will say the negative is this, the waiting period, and we'll get into that. But back benefits can go before the date you applied, if in fact you're found disabled before the date you applied. However, the disability date can be found way back when, as far back as you were, um, but they can't pay you more than 12 months worth of benefits for months prior to your application. And just to make it more confusing, there is a five month waiting period. This waiting period does not apply to SSI, only to social security disability insurance. Like a lot of insurances have waiting periods. Um, so the first five months after the date, the month that you they found you to be disabled, are non-payable. That's the waiting period. Your first benefit owed would be the sixth month after. So knowing that and knowing that they can pay you up to 12 months, nonetheless, uh, if, if there are 12 months of non-waiting period pre-application disability months, they can pay you those 12 months. That means your onset date can be as far back as 17 months prior to your date of application and you will not lose any benefits. You know, they won't be non-payable as retroactive. But if you go, if you file your application more than 17 months after you feel you became disabled and are established to be disabled, you will not get paid any more than that, those 12 months, okay? So you could be alleging, and I see this a lot, it's crushing. Um, you could see, you could be alleging three years ago, you became disabled, um, and you prove it and the, the judge can find you disabled as far back as he wants. Unlike SSI, where it's going to always be never before the date of application, SSD can officially be before that. You're just not going to get paid for all those months. Um, and the reason why that's important is because the, the date that you're found to be disabled halts the usage of years of income, or in this case, no income, uh, being worked into your average for your Social Security primary insurance amount, which is what your SSD and your Social Security retirement would be based on. So you get to take all those zero years, even if you didn't file and get to collect money on them, uh, benefits that you paid for, uh, those years of zero are not going to be included in the calculation to drag down your PIA, primary insurance amount, okay? Um, another important reason uh, to still use the oldest date that is reasonable for you, even if you can't get all the back benefits, is that it will affect when you get your Medicare. Because Medicare um, comes two years after your, two, after two years worth of payments. And I don't want to get too much into the Medicare thing, but if you have your, if you you pick the accurate date of three years ago, instead of saying, well, I'm just going to say last year since they can only pay me for a year, 
don't do it because that five month uh, waiting period will be used up in that that old time period. So you don't feel that pain now. Um, and that also works towards, you know, when you're going to get your Medicare eligibility. So it's like five months plus 24 months. Your five months is already used up. Your 24 months may or may not be depending on, you know, how much back benefits you were able to secure. Hopefully, you know, whether it was the 12 months plus whatever happened after you applied all those months um, or you applied timely. It doesn't matter, but the five months will be used up. So that's always good. Um, so always use the oldest date you can with SSD. I actually do use it for the SSI applications also, um, just in case there was some funky little glitch um, where there was a reopen of a prior case or something. Um, I When I do a SSI application, we put the oldest case possible, the oldest date possible. That's reasonably a medic, medic, medically supported even if only by work stoppage and some very minimal, I'll still put it, knowing full well that it's very likely that, um, well, it's very likely, it's almost, yeah, it's very likely that uh, they're never going to be able to use any date prior to the date we applied, um, but that one in 100 times when something gets reopened, that's why I do it, because every little protection we all need, right? Um, but also because... I want the SSA to request records from back then. And they, I also want them to consider SSD. If that person was possibly um, in short of a time when it's, when you do an SSI application, it's a deemed SSD application. And so then they will have to look back and, and do an SSD workup as well. And they have to, um, if the person was insured. Um, so I want that to take place also just to make sure there's no little tiny holes in the boat, you know, um, that are rare, but occasionally one crops up and you're like, holy moly, I didn't even think of that. And now once you think of it, you know, you never forget it. Um, but I also want them to order all the records back to them because I think that historical perspective of records is can be helpful. They can't find you disabled back then necessarily, but it's gonna help paint the picture and show where you've been, where you've come and how you got where you are now. And it might have some really good medical evidence. It could be MRIs from three years ago that they wouldn't otherwise have. There could be, um, and while you still have to get updated ones, people, you have to do that current stuff. Those old ones could show, wow. So like three years ago, she only had this, but now look at the MRI, it shows this, there's a worsening, you know? So that that can help show progression. And it's just all little, little pieces of evidence that go towards the bigger picture. Um, so SSD can go back, as you can see, um, far, far back. So you can get up to you know, whatever date you became disabled or 12 months before the date you applied, that's when your back benefits can start. Now, like SSI, it's very possible that even though you allege a previous date, the SSA doesn't see it that way. And they believe that they can only find enough evidence to find you disabled six months after you applied, right? So now you're a year down the road and they find that you, be, you became disabled six months ago. Uh, it's better than nothing. Um, you do have the option to appeal what we call partially favorable with that. Um, there are risks to appealing. So you always wanna have a kind of a basis for doing so before you take the risk perhaps. Um, but if that was the case and it was six months ago, you're gonna get zero to one month of back benefits because the first five months would be a waiting period, unpaid. And that leaves only one month left until you were decided. So you'd get that one and then you'd start getting your monthly perspectives. Okay. So the back benefits, SSI, never before the date of application. SSD, yeah, they can go back 12 months before the date of application, which means you could have been disabled 17 months ago. But if it's more than 17 months ago, you have lost some of the back benefits you could have gotten had you filed more timely, gotten protective filings, Etc. Cetera, Etc. Cetera. Okay, so the last thing I wanted to touch on, on how to protect both of those things to some degree, is protective filing. Um, it is the best thing next to sliced bread in my world, anyway, in my worldview, because I have many, many clients who are really slow in getting me all the paperwork that I require. Um, I give them forms with simple questions, but they some of them take some thought, and people who are not good with paperwork take some time. It's data for us. It doesn't go to the SSA because we draft everything up for you. Um, but it's all based on the information you give us to do that with. Um, 
So the data comes first, we have more of a leisurely time to do it. We get a protective filing date um, for whichever or both um, programs you may or may not be filing for. And the, the one for SSD gives you six months. So if we file, pardon, I need a little water break. If we file in September, 2023, um, no, 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 we, we sent in a protective filing in September of 2023 and we, but can't get the rest of the paperwork that need to really solidly do the application until November uh, or December, that's still within that six month protective filing window. So you would be good to go for a social security application being the applications getting wrapped up later on, right? Three, four months later, but they're gonna give it a date of September as when you applied so that you don't lose any more of those back benefits behind you in that 12 month window. You follow? Because now 12 months would be 14, 14 months later, you know? Um, SSI, it's not quite such a generous protective filing. It's only, I wanna say 60 days, but that, you know, almost anybody can do that unless they're being hospitalized. Even if you do a page a day, right? To get the, the, the information in for a solid application. Um, page a day, just do a page a day. Um, th I'd say the hardest part is being organized enough to have a list of all your doctor's offices. Even if you don't know all the individual's names, you don't have to know all the individual's names. You probably know the doctor. Uh, you don't have to know all the NPs and CRMPs and PAs and MAs and all that. Um, and even if you don't know the doctor's name, let's say it's rotating doctors in a clinic, the name of the clinic, the address, when about you started there, when, the, when about the last time you were there was, and kind of what they treated you for. And that is enough information for the SSA or your representative, your attorney or non-attorney rep to go get them. So that's what the application wants. They want all that medical stuff in so that when they shoot it up to the state agency for a medical workup, they can bang out the request, get those records and make a, um, as speedy of a determination as they can. We know it's not particularly speedy at this time in history, uh, fall of 2023, um, unfortunately, but hopefully that will improve in the upcoming months or years. I don't know. Um, okay, so back benefits. Know them. Uh, if you have any questions on that, put them in the comments and I will try to touch on them. Um, if I need to get more detailed with a particular one, I could do that perhaps. Um, I'm kind of a visual person. <laughs> so I'll, I do my like back benefits, like kind of like a calendar or a clock and like this many months. Um, I do a lot of visual charts when I am figuring out calculations for people. <laughs> anyway, I don't know if that helps you too, but um, all right, that's it. So back benefits and protective filing. Protective filing is how you protect your back benefits. Okay, very important. All right, time for bed. Bye guys.